<laughs> What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the VSO Gun Channel. Thanks for joining us here today. We're continuing with our armor testing series. Specifically today, we're continuing with part two of the caliber armor testing. If you missed part one, it was on their rifle rated armor, their hard plates. And I have to say that that testing was fairly absurd. Those plates did really well. You should be aware of this product. I'll have that video linked in the description box down below. Hopefully you find somewhere else to be. Today, we're gonna to be looking at their soft armor. And then this stuff is rated NIJ level 3A. That's your pistol rated armor up to 44 Magnum. We've got some pretty cool tests scheduled on this thing as well. We have a bunch of configurations that we're gonna be looking at. Wombat's gonna be here any second. So I'm gonna go ahead and get dressed up and we're gonna to get to it. I've put him in the actual hard plate armor. And what I want you to do is kind of just monitor it over the course of this afternoon because it's a multi-curve plate. You're a smaller person. I kind of want to see, it's the truth. I want to Getting see what- Why am I wearing the heavy thing again? Yeah, exactly. It's really not that heavy. But... Yeah, but I want to see if it pinches or pokes you anywhere that, you know, because it is a multi-curve plate. I it's got not... curves, Shorty got curves. But what I've done is I've swapped over to their soft armor minimalist carrier. They'll also have another option for this that'll be able to attach various uh, tactical attachments and things like that. But what we're gonna do for soft armor, first test is just our ballistic ladder here. And we're gonna start off with nine millimeter, 45, and then 44 Magnum. What are you, uh, what gun are you using? Uh, this is my M&P Pro Series Core. It's wearing a Trigicon RMR and a TLR1 HL from the Streamlight. I did a bunch of other crap to it too. And we're gonna fire one round of 115 grain ball. Yeah. It has an Obsidian 9 on the front of it. Go ahead and hit it. One round. Well, how about that sum being right there? That's what I call center mass. Not too shabby on my marksmanship skills, if I do say so myself. And actually, as I feel it, it seems like the round may have kind of spread out a little bit. It might actually be in a couple of pieces. Well, what we'll do is we'll shoot the other ones and then we'll do a dissection. Yeah, we're going to have to cut into this thing. This is a Glock 21 45 caliber handgun wearing an obsidian for the suppressor. <laughs> a little bit more prolific result on that one than the nine millimeter. I found it. Huh? Oh, right is it down there? Yeah, it dropped to the bottom. I thought it would be like stuck in there. Yeah, I, I just thought it would be like stuck in there. Maybe the nine mil one's down there too. Yeah, it totally fell to the bottom. Yeah, that's neat. You can see the full bullet there. That'll be cool to pull out when we're done. Yeah. We just need to make sure that we put the 44 like up here or something. And for 44 Magnum, we're going to be using a Desert Eagle. It weighs about 17.19 pounds. Let's see what happens. 44 Mag. Did it fragment, do we think, or is it? Well, if you take that 11 pound thing out of my hand, I might be able to examine this with proper scientific aptitude. I just, that 45 round like fell to the bottom. And I wasn't able to find the 9 mil one. I feel like the 9 mil one still has some fragments in there. Hidden up. I mean, you definitely see there's a bulge. But I have not been able to locate the round itself by groping this thing. Let's uh, do a little surgery here. They only use DuPont Kevlar in their Give literature. Give the folks a look there. Look so. at that Kevlar weave. Kevlar tri-weave fibers like Batman up in here. See how it works? How you just pull the whole kit and caboodle out of there. See if there's anything. Oh yeah, it's, look, there's one in there. <laughs> this is the 45, and it just flattened it out. Look at that. Just look at yeah. it. That in my pocket. Fragments. Yeah, it seemed like some of them did fragment. 45, this though. Is, this is the 9 mil. Maximum energy transfer on a 45, yeah. yeah 9 mil is, uh, so we, it was the, like, brass jacketed ones yes this so, is actually the round yeah so another one that's of the rounds the, was used. that's pretty much what's left of that and the and then there there boys and girls is our 44 magnum <laughs> what the f <laughs> yeah would you look at that just like a big old daisy there look at that go maximum energy transfer 44 mag there's gotta be more left than nine mil than that yeah hang on i got it it's right here it's the same thing yeah see so that's the front. You see that? That's the front of the yeah of the bullet, and this is the back of the bullet. You can see it's got the 
Yeah, it yeah. flattened out all the way. But you can see it says DuPont Kevlar on there. So I I feel like we should do more to this, but we have more tests to do. So we're gonna we'll just save this for later, maybe. So what I've got here is same thing, NIJ level 3A, but this is a panel for backpacks. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna measure the back face deformation of this thing just like that. I'm just gonna put that right in front of our sand backing there. And then we have a trauma pad. This thing is basically designed to go behind the armor, between the soft armor and your body. And we're gonna see what the kind of difference it makes between uh, no trauma pad with the trauma pad. Okay, let's approach, measure. I'm gonna say an inch and a quarter of, of deformation oh, yeah. on the sand without the trauma layer. Let's go ahead and repack the sand and then put the uh, trauma layer in there and see what happens. Let's do that. That sounds like a job for you. Level 3A. And then behind it, we're just gonna put that trauma pad down at the same level and uh, just shoot a little bit to the, to the side. This has got some concavity to it now. I'm oh, not yeah. sure if the camera can pick that up. But it's all bent out of shape. Yeah, a little bit bent. Caught around, still warm on the back. I can feel it right there, so that's still going. And almost no deformation. <laughs> There's a little bit, like obviously you can see that it hit like right here. About a half inch? Is that where, that's a half inch. Yeah, yeah that's um, I think that's reasonable. I mean, depending on where we move it in the, in the crater there, but yeah, I mean about- get a maximum penetration. What's that? Go to the maximum penetration. You wanna try it with 44? Yeah, let's do that. Definitely got some deformation on that one. We're still getting an inch and a half. It's like the area spread out over a yeah, wider area. Yeah, it's a much wider crater. Like, it's all the way out here. Yeah. Wow. <coughs> it's, you can see where that hit. Yeah. Right? So, that's neat. It's the, pretty much the same area. Well, I hit them real close together. Oh, did you? Yeah. It, it looks like approximately the same area, but it's like flatter. I'm going to call that, what do you say, three quarters of an inch? From the from the that's probably even it's probably less than that we're gonna be conservative and call that three quarters yeah i mean it's i i don't think three quarters is wrong but i, I think it's actually if anything it's slightly less well we did an absurd test for the hard armor so we can't close this video out without doing an absurd test for the soft armor can we i've got one level 3a ballistic insert left so we're gonna shove it up inside this vest here, maybe. It doesn't fit the, the best, but it'll do for now. And what are we gonna use for a gun? How about 50 Action Express? Now, guys, <laughs> this armor is not rated for this at all. These are some of the 300 grain Hornady loads. And uh, here we go. Again, this armor is not rated for this at all. Absurdity test. <laughs> oh, let's go take a look. So, it folded it like a tortilla. Entry wound. Entry wound. We've got some serious disruption in here. Uh, look at that, guys. You can see it. It caught it. We have defeated 50 Action Express. Guys, look. I don't know what else you could ask. Now, blunt force trauma, it probably wrecked all of your insides, but hey, at least you don't have a bullet hole in you. There you have it, boys and girls. <laughs> you can see it embedded in a couple layers of Kevlar there. If you guys would like more information on anything that we tested in this video, you can uh, find it over on Caliber's website. It looks like they're doing a pretty darn good job on their armor, so definitely something that uh, we would endorse. Definitely looks good. Special thanks to them for making this video possible, and I'm gonna absolutely need a knife to uh, dig out that 50 Action Express round. I am impressed by that. That's pretty freaking cool. You guys thought I was only gonna shoot that thing once. Are you kidding? <laughs> what channel do you think this is?
So there's the first one. It was ejected from its place when I shot the second one. Put that in my pocket for later. And this one penetrated the vest a little bit more uh, because the whole thing was delaminated. But one, two, three layers. I want you guys to see this in real time. There it is. 50 Action Express bullet there. And there is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, what appear to be eight layers of Kevlar. So not even halfway through the vest, 50 Action Express. I'm out of here. You missed. It like, this trigger is weird. This thing has the longest take up of like any freaking handgun ever. Did you get a round in? Yeah, I racked it. You're sure that there's a round in it? Jeez. <laughs> I mean, I had it back like 10 feet. Yeah, that's some serious deformation there. Go ahead and bring it in. That is a <clears throat> crushed sternum. And uh, so, we're getting a little close there, Wombat. Another big hole, you know, it's what I do. Pretty, right on top of each other. Pretty close to that uh, 9mm hole. Tell you the though. truth, I was aiming for the hangman. If you ever see Mel Brooks movies.